Good morning, and welcome to the 89th edition of Wake Up Tacoma. Today is Tuesday, February 4th. The week you've been waiting for is finally here. Books and Basketball is this weekend. This Friday, doors open at 6 p.m. for our huge book sale and epic student staff game. Come see your teachers and friends in action. Tickets are three dollars for the game. Of, for the game, we also have thousands of used books for sale and terrific silent auction with lots of items from your favorite local pizzas places. Pizza and drinks will be for sale, and we'll have a bake sale for your sweet tooth. Can you get enough? Come back Saturday morning, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. for big discounts on books and final auction bid. Bring your little siblings for free face painting, balloon animals, stories, and fun. We will still need lots of volunteers, especially for face painting and entertainment, Saturday morning. Sign up at tpmspta.org. See you this weekend for books and basketball. What do you love? Valentine's Day is coming up, and the Media Center not wants to know what it is that you love. Do you love chocolate cake, a snowy day, or your pet? Come to the Media Center this week and tell us. Everyone, students, teachers, administrators, and staff are welcome to participate. Submit your entries by Friday, February 7th, and we will compile all the entries to create our own TPMS love poem for Valentine's Day. Look for the entry box in the Media Center. And now, a special package in honor of Black History Month, a special biography on Medger Evans. Evers. While we celebrate February as African American History Month, we will certainly hear about the numerous African Americans who have contributed in diverse and significant ways to the development of our country. There are countless innovators, groundbreakers, leaders, and heroes connected to every field of study and aspect of life who deserve our gratitude and admiration. One group that seems to get more attention than others during this month are the heroes of the Civil Rights Movement. Upon analysis, it is easy to understand why. The people associated with the civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s were not only great thinkers, philosophers, and leaders, but also had to have the psychological, moral, and intellectual fortitude or strength to overcome the almost overwhelming obstacles that the prejudices of the day presented. Imagine fighting for what you believe to be right and just only to be attacked and reviled. How many of us would continue the fight after being jailed, beaten, threatened, and insulted? Without question, the person most commonly connected with the civil rights movement is Martin Luther King, and with good reason. Not only did his works during his life do more to advance the cause than any other, but his legacy, or what he left behind, is larger than any other of the era. His speeches and writings are still studied today not only for their righteous messages, but for their amazing eloquence and construction. However, one unfortunate result of the focus on Martin Luther King is his overshadowing many other great contributors to the civil rights movement. One such under-celebrated individual is Medgar Evers. Medgar Evers was born in Mississippi in 1925. After serving in the Army during World War II, he went to college where he was a member of the football and track teams and also the debate team, the choir. He edited the school newspaper and held student offices. This obviously brilliant and motivated young man wanted nothing more but to help his fellow African Americans overcome the social hurdles of segregation and racism. In the early 50s, he began setting up NAACP offices throughout Mississippi and organizing boycotts of businesses that refused full service to African Americans. Despite death threats and setbacks like being denied admission to the University of Mississippi Law School, Evers persevered. In a famous case that got national attention, he helped another hero of the civil rights movement, James Meredith gained admission to the University of Mississippi in 1962. As the first African American to attend this institution, Meredith faced threats and attacks, but also persevered, 
in order to open the door for others to follow. A riot on the University of Mississippi campus after Meredith's admission left two people dead and increased the number of death threats on Medgar Evers, who many blamed for the riots and the deaths. Evers continued to work, and on June 12, 1963, as he was returning from an NAACP meeting, Evers was killed in front of his house. The man suspected of the murder, Byron de la Beckwith, was greeted at the courthouse during his trial with a handshake by the then governor of Mississippi, and found not guilty of the crime, despite what most saw as overwhelming evidence against him. He faced trial again five years later, and was again acquitted. Finally, in 1994, in his third trial, 30 years after the crime, Byron de la Beckwith was found guilty of murder. Another example of the frustratingly slow yet, we hope, inevitable march towards the promise this country holds. A promise that Medgar Evers selflessly worked for against great odds, sacrificing all he had to advance this cause, this promise, liberty and justice for all. Welcome back. Attention all 8th graders, have you nominated your peers for the 2020 TPMS yearbook superlative yet? If not, there is still time. Just ask your science teacher for the Google class code and complete the nomination survey. Who will be nominated most likely to fight aliens and win? Who will be nominated class clown? It's up to you to decide. Anyone with, with multiple nominations for a category will be voted on a later date. Be sure to place your nominations by February 11th. Get the class code from your science teacher and place your nomination. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? School, school counselors! This week is School Counselor Appreciation Week. There will be index cards and pencils in the media center and on the cafeteria stage during lunch for you to write a kind note to your counselor. Attention all students who submitted an application to be on a Waco Tacoma crew. Training is this Thursday after school. Again, attention all students who submitted an application to be on a Waco Tacoma crew. Training is this Thursday after school. If you're unable to attend, please see Mr. Wilson. If you are interested in going on the Quebec City trip next January, have a parent or guardian come to the information meeting on Wednesday, February 5th at 9 p.m. in room 302. This just, just in. in. If you are in French period 4 or 6 and missed class yesterday, Monday, come by room 302 to pick up your homework. This just in as well. Attention SGA. There will be an all SGA meeting today in room 220. Again, there will be and at all SGA meeting today in room 220. This Justin as well. This is a reminder that today we will be having our 13th session of the after school extended day math program. Mr. Box 6th grade class is meeting in room 218. Ms. Monroe's 6th grade class is meeting in room 308. And Mr. Einhorn's 7th and 8th grade class is meeting in room 320. If you are registered for the program, your attendance is encouraged and expected. And this Justin as well. There will be no intramural football today. It will be rescheduled for tomorrow, Wednesday, February 5th. This just in as well. The meeting for 2021 Spain trip is tomorrow at 6 p.m. in room 202. Let Senora Vogel know if you or your adult plan to attend. Please remember to stay tuned for our Mindfulness Minute following Wake Up Tacoma. Try to close your eyes, clear your mind, and clutch you on your BV. This has been Mofu and Grace with Wake Up Tacoma. Have, Have a, a great, great day. day.